Hello everyone, welcome to another week in my garden. This morning we're going to have a look and I'm going to harvest the peppers that are ready and the tomatoes that are ready. I'll harvest and show you what I've harvested. If you have a quick look down here, look, you can see the peppers are really, really ready. If we, if we leave these big ones on, then these smaller ones won't get a chance. There you see there's plenty there. But we have smaller ones at the top, so let's remove the big ones and bring the smaller ones on. We, uh, I bring them out in the daytime and pop them in at night if it's going to be cold. We've had a little bit of beetle attack on them, but there's been no problem since. And let's have a look at the tomatoes. As you can see, there's quite a few tomatoes ready. There's one or two actually splitting now. I think that's perhaps the change in temperature. A couple of cucumbers there. We'll take those as well while we're here. If you notice, I am taking the, the leaves off so it lets the sun shine in so we can get this crop right and if you look at these i've had to put those in a bag because they're so heavy i think you could pay, play bowls with those they're all coming well the tiger ones are doing rather well they will harvest them and let you see the green ones when they're right they actually get this yellowness on them so wait for them to turn yellow then you know that they're ripe for picking we'll get picked and then we'll show you what we've got we've harvested the few tomatoes that we had and uh, a few peppers a couple of lettuce from outside in the boxes cucumbers are ready and i've taken the french beans out of the box this morning so there was those few on them that would just do a little boiling with those you can see all the different varieties they're looking rather well we've had a few splits but we'll take those down chickens will eat those the lettuce have come from outside i'll show you that in a moment in the box very very well they've come in the other thing we just need to say that as these are picked and there's just a few left I'll be taking this off and then as soon as I've finished the, the plant the plant I'll take out put a, one of the peppers in there to finish because the peppers will keep going for quite a while yet and they're quite long lived the peppers in the place and if we can keep the peppers in this heat for some time that's when you'll get your colours the reds and the yellows on the peppers at the moment we're just getting green the cucumber will continue growing and I should put some sticks across these hooks that we got ready and then we'll take it right along the glass house. Again, it'll keep going for some time yet. If the leaves at the bottom are getting a bit old and tatty, just take them off. It'll soon grow some more up the stem. As you can see, they're going quite well. I'm quite pleased with those. Now these two boxes, we had the peas in them, which we've harvested, probably eaten. The onions, which are now on the string down there. Some cabbage that have also been eaten. They've been taken out and I've put some lettuce in for quickness. And as you can see, they are absolutely beautiful. Covered with a bit of this net, just to keep mainly the, the insects off. And they, I just leave them like that. French beans we had in the pots, I've removed this morning. I'll just show you the nodules on the roots so you know what they are. Right, these are the roots of the French beans that are here. Can you see those little nodules on them? They're full of nitrogen. You always get that on beans. Right, so if you have beans in your garden, cut the plant off and leave the root in because that's what you're leaving, these little nodules that are full of nitrogen and it's a good natural way of getting it in. So we'll bury that back where it belongs. And I think this one, I'm going to put an handful of lime on it mix it down a little bit put some kale in because kale we can harvest the kale from here most of the winter then as well as what we've got down the garden right so we just popped down i've got one or two little jobs to do on the grapevine that need to be finished so let's go and do that we're down at the grapevine i'm going to do a little bit more thinning because as you can see i've done quite a bit already it looks a bit drastic but i'm quite happy with the front that's fine but as I look back, that'll be fine. As we look, you see, 
Here, there's a very poor bunch. Let me take it off. There you see, that's not going to make it now. And so coming along, the bottom of that one will take. And follow along. Here, look, there's another one. There's... There you go, look. I have dinned it once, but it's not going to make it now, so we may as well take it off. I'm still concerned about the the wasps coming in, so I'll have to try and get some sort of cover they ripen. There's another bunch here, look, that's not going to make it. We'll take those. It looks a bit drastic, but if you think I'm sacrificing that one for this lovely bunch, we'll have that bunch rather than the two here. This is not going to do nothing now, so we take that. I'm still going through it every two or three, three days removing. It's still throwing shoots, so I'm still having to keep that up all the time. I think now looking through them, that will be about it. I keep putting the onions out when it's a nice day and get some sunshine on them to ripen them. They do store better. Today uh, is Wednesday, nice day, a bit overcast but that's alright and there's still no rain. Um, we're going to do the grease bands today so we'll take them off and have a look what we've got on them and then renew them, get the new ones on ready for autumn. So here we are look, those of you who were with me before can remember putting them on. Now I've got gloves on today because I've cut my finger and I didn't want to get grease on it. There's the old ones. Alright, let's have a look. Messy old job still. There they go. Oh, and let's have a look. As you can see, it's absolutely covered with insects. A lot of them on there. So we've done some good. Right, so that's that one off. Get a cough and just clean it. Try and get as much as the old grease off as you can. That's done nicely, look. Here's the new bands we're going to use. We get them so we know where we're going to do it, say to there. So we'll cut it off at that. Cut that off, there you go. Open it up, very difficult with gloves on, but we'll try. There we go, look. Opening it up. Sticky old job, this. There you go, we'll put it on the same place and then we'll grease it up, tie it and grease it. Take those off, look there, what's stuck to my fingers. Right, we'll just put the string on. I'm using jute string, so if it needs to, it'll it'll give. We'll just put a little knot in that. Don't worry too much about this kinking, because we'll fill that up with grease in a moment. Tight, but not too tight. This string will give anyway, so there'll be no chance of it doing any damage to the tree. Same again at the bottom, look, I used the main roll. Now the codling moth will be coming up the, from the soil soon to lay its eggs in, caught in the cracks in the bark so it can come out in the spring and eat your apples. I think there's three or four different things that come up. Right, now the grease. Same as last time, look, we just pop it round the bottom. Some people don't do it, but I always think if you do do it, you're protecting your tree. Any places where it's not quite stuck, just fill up with grease, it'll be fine. I've got quite a few trees to do, so it'll take me some time to do them all, but I'll get them all done in one, and then it's a job done. Here yeah, look, just pop it on. Now, 
if you've got a stake with them don't forget you must put a band on the stake as well or so just use that to get way of getting up the tree I did put some supports on that apple tree if you was watching those will now be taken off because of the grease bands going on so ants they will carry aphid up the tree aphid will suck the sap out of your leaves and then they'll take the honeydew out of the aphid and that's how a lot of aphids get on your plants it's the ants that that move them about that is one of the grease bands done ready for the autumn winter we'll do them again in the spring we'll renew them like we did this year uh, when we come deep winter we'll be winter washing the trees uh, let's go and have a look at some digging shall we? right here we are this is the bed sea which will be the brassicas for next year uh, i only need to turn this bed because it was used for last year's onion bed there'll be a lot of old mulch still in it so we'll use that'll be used again for the brassicas i will be liming it but if you're liming don't put your lime in while you're digging if you put lime in deep it's no good at all it won't do any any good at all likewise if you put it on the surface the air does something to the lime and it's no good at all the, if you're liming the lime needs to be just under the surface of your soil so i should do that later i should lime it and then just turn it quickly with the fork on top to put the lime in so this is just straight digging always have a bucket with you i always start by putting two lines in so i know how far i'm digging across obviously i don't want to go too close to those leaks so i put it about nine inches away so i'll follow that line down but i'll just show you just what i call deep forking now when i forked that I forked here so there is a little bit of overlap so it's easier at this side than it is at that. I have very very stony land so I have my bucket and take some of the bigger stones out. So first of all look, this one will be easy because it's already been dug. So it's one, one width for the fork back and then we just loosen it there look. Then there, this will how you get started. This one will be very, very easy. And you just throw it forward. This is the easy bit. Because that's pre-dug. Try and get straight at the back. Protect that. These blooming tapes get everywhere. You take that out. Then we mark the next one, you see. Now it'll get a bit tougher now. You can see that we just break it. And then don't bite off too much especially if you've got a bad back like me you don't want too much so just do a little bit push it through and i've got a very long handled fork i don't know if you notice but it saves me stooping all the time if you can see in the soil you can see the old compost still there so it's it's all doing good and just throw it forward and just break it with the back of your fork We'll quickly do a cross. Now your last one, make sure you go down straight. Then again, mark in straight. Just lever it away. This is getting heavier. It's getting out and just break it with the back of your fork if you can. Yeah, this is just straight forking. Now we'll leave it there so we can show you and clean that out now obviously you'll do the whole row but we want to show you spade work so we'll leave that bit for the spade work when we've gone all the way across what i do to make it deep is i put the fork in push it down and all i do is leave it back to loosen then you're you're breaking the subsoil up a bit you see so it lets the roots in you see so it's all nice and loose you can see where i did the last run so in actual fact you've gone one two depth down that's a good depth to go now i'll just show you how to be dig with the spade right we're going to use the spade now this is you dig like this if you're digging in the autumn 
I used the spade and where we broke it up I should just leave it forward and let the, the wind to break the soil down so it saves you doing all that work so again mark the distance in straight down and don't bite too much off you see my spade is very long handled so I don't have to do it and all you do is that just straight forward and the winter will do the rest of the work for you that's how you autumn dig just push that in getting stronger now this strong old land this is and just push it in and this is autumn dig so that's all you do just throw it forward and that's it so I'll finish this row and just show you how it's done We'll mark it twice, so it's over now. You can see it's getting tougher down there now. And just, just take the spade and put it forward. Now I don't do any bottom digging with this way of digging, I just turn in the soil. If you can see, put those there look because they rolled over you can see the two different types of ways of doing it now in the summer and spring makes a nice till in the winter you leave it like that the wind the rain the ice will break it all down for you and with it being rough the air tends to slow down as it goes across it and will actually warm the soil as well so that's winter digging I still have to redo that because this is not winter digging it's quite a hot day right now we go to two names for the next one it's proper names double digging I call it hard work there are other names but we won't go into that at the moment so we'll go over to the trench digging now this is the most difficult way of digging but it's the most beneficial I do this on my potato patch every year I didn't do it to my potato patch last year because they had a bad back so I got somebody else to dig it but they just forked it over but if I'm feeling all right this year we'll do it properly and we get better results this is the very very best way of digging so what you do you dig a trench now the soil from the trench which is there for this is demonstration only that would normally go away to where you finish so you put that to where you're going to finish so you go up and down your rows not much wider than this because you'll be worn out else and then when you're finished you've got a trench like this at the end of the dig then that soil is ready on hand to go back in i hope you follow that so what we do we dig a trench at the beginning take that soil away now this is the digging that you will need a shovel and what we do, we get all the crummy bits, the crumbs that's in the bottom and take those out because that's good, don't get too deep, whatever you do. So we're uh, one spit deep and we took the crumbs out. So now what we do, we put some manure in there or compost. Uh, that should be enough there, I think. Now this is out of my compost heap, it can be in the bucket, so put that in the bottom, like that, just spread it out. It can be manure that's not quite as far rotted down as this if you want. Now this is where we change to, this is a steel handled fork, it's an old one but it does the job brilliantly. So what we do now, we climb in and what we do, we dig that compost into the bottom you can see what i'm blessed with look look at that coming half a break and then we dig that soil into the bottom that compost into the bottom you can see look it really is clay down there so we're digging that in There's another one of those tapes. Right. And you can see because it's clay, you can see why you need a steel handled fork. If you had a wooden one, you'd have snapped it by now. Now I did this uh, to this patch about three years ago, and you can see it's all gone. 
So really down there, dig it up, turn it over, really is. There you go, look at that, a solid clay. Push it level again, all the way through. Now, any plants that you put in the top will actually be able to put their deep roots into that and it not be into solid clay but into nice manure if you like that's down there which will rot down very slowly down there. It'll help with the drainage. Once you've done that then we start again. Use my long handled spade for this and here we go again. So what we do, we mark out. I'll just do one or two to show you how we do it. Don't want that in there, look do we? So this is where you need your line across so you know to make the next trench there, you see. So as we go, remember this is the easy bit because it's the overlap. And you just throw that forward onto that trench. See? That's heavy. I did pre-water this actually because I knew it would be difficult to get into. So all we do, we move that across. Again, we'll just do half so you can see what we're up to. And then I'll show you what we do. We go to your line. Take it out to the bottom. You change to the shovel and take the crumbs out the bottom. Put those over there, look. Remember, don't go too deep. Now, before you put, before we actually put the compost in the bottom, we put some onto that face as well. So remember, we would do the whole of the trench. We just take the crumbs out. We don't want them. Pile that up. Now, can you remember when we started? We put them, put the muck in. We do the same. Quite a few worms in there, you'll always get those worms in the compost heat, you won't get them in the garden itself. Now where we normally dig that in, before you start, you put some of this on the face like that, so that when you cover it with the next one, you're manuring the land as well at the top. So just space that out, I don't know where that comes from. Space that out. Remember it's a full trench, not that this is only for demonstration. Go down, pull down, and really lean it back and get it out. Don't want that in. Right, so again, in all the way down, full, sp full spit of your fork, it must go down. And then turn it, you can see the clay coming up. Make sure the clay stays there, we don't want it up here. And then in the last one, deep as possible. And that is double digging. Very, very hard work. In the middle of August, you don't be doing it. It's more of an autumn dig. This way of doing it, because we do a three year rotation, I always do it on the bed that's going to carry the potatoes. If you imagine potatoes planted in that, you can get the feet right down. Beautiful. Put as much manure in as you can spare. Obviously there's the onion beds need more than the potatoes. So you sort your onion bed out and then do what's left into the potato bed. But by breaking the bottom up, you finish up with a usable soil of at least 60 centimetres. I think you'd have a job to get that depth with a rotavator, although some, some have got ploughs on and everything these days. That's my way of digging. If you want to have a go, do have a go. Remember, fork it, break the bottom with the foot, but don't turn it. Just break it and leave it. The spade digging we do in the winter and let the weather break the clods, if you like. Break the clods down, that's good saves you a lot of work this one double digging hard work very hard work but very very rewarding if you double dig the the rewards are massive 
I shall do the potato patch this year. I'm feeling a bit better this year and I've got some new tablets. I'll keep paying away. We'll try and do it this, well, we will do it this way this year and we'll show you what difference the results are. This is really good way of doing it. Okay. If you do do it, be careful with your back, etc. It is hard work. Or if you can get somebody else to do it properly, that's even better. <laughs> okay. Hello there. Friday today. Wet Friday. Been waiting all two weeks for this rain. It's actually wonderful. It's really going to do the garden good. I have been irrigating though, but this is going to finish it off. Right, we've had a good week. Um, I'd say I've been irrigating, I've watered the potatoes very, very well. This rain will give them another drink. And next week I'm going to take the tops off to let the skins harden below. And uh, then it's two weeks after that we'll harvest it. That will be ongoing for next week. There will be some uh, winter broccoli to set maybe next week we'll have to see how we go uh, i have prepared all the land all the digging for the brassicas for winter and the overwintering onions have all been dug and that is now ready so we've, we've got the land prepared well so as i say it's friday wet friday wonderful rain i could stand out in it all day but i've got a bit of a cold so i won't um, what we'll do today is just to finish the week I'm going to ask the camera person just to go around and show you our courtyard where we sit and have the meals on the nice evenings. I haven't had a breakfast on here yet, but I'm sure we will soon. So enjoy the view of the flowers, enjoy the last of the Olympic, and in the wonderful rain of Nottinghamshire, I'll uh, see you next week. Bye now.